This is a mask fade transition in Premiere Pro. No plugins are required and I'll be showing you how to pair it with other effects for a better outcome. Step 1. Preparing your clips. So, as you can see, I've got mine over here, the first and the second, and what you want to do is move the second clip onto another layer, so I'm just going to move it up, and also move it 5 keyframes to the left, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and just shift it to your left, like so. So now it should be on top of the first clip for just the last final few frames. Step 2. Masking. So head over to your effect controls and underneath opacity you want to click this circle over here. Once you click it, it will create a mask like so. Change the mask feather from 10 to 500. And what you want to do next is just change this from fit to something like 25 or 50, but this will depend on your sequence. Whatever works best for you because what we're going to be doing is just expanding the mask so that it reaches the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you see these edges over here, just make sure the mask is over them, like so, like that, and just repeat for each of the edges, like that, and for the top as well, that looks fine. Might need to move the bottom a bit more, like that, and that's fine. Again, as I said, it does not have to be perfect, this looks fine, and if you are struggling to move the points, just change it from 50 to 25, so then you can adjust it easily. Step 3 keyframing. So what we're going to be doing now is moving this mask to actually animate it. Make sure you are at the start of your second clip and hit the mask path option here. Once you click on the stopwatch it's going to create a keyframe. Sometimes when you click on a certain button it hides the effect so it can hide the mask. If that happens just click away and then click back and then just click on the mask path and it should appear again. Now this is where you can decide how you want it to be animated. So if you want it to appear from the bottom right you can move it all the way down just like that. Or if you want it to start from the top and then gradually make its way down, you can place it above somewhere like there. I recommend leaving it slightly visible, so like that. And the same would apply to any other direction, so if you're doing the corner, just leave it like that. For this example, I'm going to be using the bottom right corner, so I'm just going to move it down here, leaving it very slightly visible and making sure that it is being keyframed. Head one keyframe ahead, but make sure that you click away, so click over here and then use the arrow keys to move one keyframe forward. If you don't click away, it's going to move the actual mask so just keep that in mind. Once you have moved one keyframe forward you want to gradually just move it closer not too close to the center you want to keep it similar to the previous keyframe so a very slight jump like so. Next keyframe move it closer to the center like so. Now it's almost taking up half of the right side. One more keyframe ahead and make a slight jump like so. One more but now we want to make a big jump. So move it somewhere like here. As you can see, clip one is slightly visible and that's how we want it. So that looks fine. Head one more keyframe ahead and if you want to, you can make a cut and just get rid of the mask. So just right click on mask one and click on cut. This is so it doesn't interfere with any of your other masks and also other effects. Now if you play it back and also set it back to fit, it's going to look like this, which is pretty good but I think we can improve this further by adding on more effects, which is why step 3 is about pairing it with effects. We're going to be using Gaussian Blur and also Exposure. To make it easier for this example, I'm going to be just combining the two clips that I just cut, since there is going to be a lot of keyframing between the two clips. Add on the first effect, which is Gaussian Blur, underneath Blur and Sharp onto your first clip, head to the end of your first clip and move two keyframes back, so one, two, and set the blurriness to something like 20, at about six keyframes left, so five, six, and set the blurriness to zero. Graph this like how I do, so just click on the arrow next to the stopwatch and click on the first keyframe, pull this handle all the way to the right and slightly down making sure it's on level like so and let go. For a stronger impact I'm just going to shift all of these keyframes to the left just one keyframe back. Now we're going to repeat this for the second clip so head to the start and then head one two three keyframes ahead. Add on Gaussian blur and keyframe this to 20. Head towards the end just one keyframe back so not to the very end just one keyframe back and set it back to zero and we're going to graph this as well making sure the bump is towards the left so just pull this handle all the way to the left and make sure it's on level, then let go. So now we've got our blur transition. We need to now add exposure. So search for Lumetri Color. It's spelled like this underneath Color Correction and just add it onto your first clip. Scroll down until you see Lumetri Color and open up Basic Correction. The setting you're going to be keyframing is exposure. What you can also do is follow the previous effect that we just applied. You can use this as a reference to apply the following keyframes. So for example, I can set the exposure to zero for the same frame as the blurriness and then just move a few frames ahead 
set it like so and then set it to I think five looks good might be a bit too bright so maybe four or three it looks a bit too overexposed graph this as well open it up and then just put it to the right done in fact I actually think it's best to move this last keyframe a bit closer to the edge so one two just move it there this makes the exposure last a little longer so it's less stiff repeat this with the second clip add on lumetri color open up basic correction um, head to the start maybe around I'd say one two three keyframes ahead so then we give the mask enough time to reveal itself before adding on the exposure set it to something like three or two and just graph this as well so I'm just gonna head towards the end reset that back to zero and graph this like so. A few problems. So after applying all your effects, you may notice that your clip looks slightly weird, maybe darker, especially around the edges as if we applied a vignette effect, even though we didn't. This is because of the mask. So what you can do now after applying all your effects is make a cut just like last time and then remove the mask transition. So before it looked like this and after removing it, it looks like this. And this will not impact any of the effects that we just applied, unless you want to make some changes later on, which will require a bit of tweaking it's a bit complicated but anyways that's all for this video so thank you for watching and i'll see you next time peace